Okay, so welcome back to the class of meningococcal meningitis. We had already talked about the theria. Uh, we had already talked about pertussis. Now this is the third topic which we are left with that is the meningococcal meningitis. Um, meningitis, meninges you know. So any inflammation to the meninges is called meningitis. So this is a pictorial depiction how it will look like. Now before I begin with meningococcal meningitis, let me tell you it is a very 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 important childhood diseases. A lot of patient dies of meningococcal meningitis which with the data we will study in the subsequent slides and you will be taught in much more details when you go to pediatrics. Again though meningococcal meningitis is not very much prevalent in India but West Bengal is already known to have a lot of cases of meningococcal meningitis. If I go to Europe, if I go to uh, North America, the number of meningococcal meningitis cases are huge. So, without further ado, let's start with meningococcal meningitis. See, uh, meningitis is uncommon, but it can be very fatal. Why? If you can see the data over here, one in every 10 people infected with meningococcal diseases will die. So, 10 patients having meningococcal diseases, one is bound to die. And out of every five meningitis survivor, one will suffer from long-term disabilities such as loss of limb, brain damage, deafness and nervous system problems. It was first described in 1805 after an epidemic of meningitis in Geneva and not before 1882. That means a span of around roughly, let's say, 70, how much? 77 years, if I'm not wrong. Uh, it was recovered from CSF. And it is a gram-negative diplococcus and subdivided into sero group. They're based on distinctive capsular polysaccharides. And human is the only natural reserve voice. So uh, animal cannot transmit it to humans. It is only human who can transmit this particular disease from them to others. Now, uh, Neisseria meningitis is the leading cause of meningitis in both children and young adults. And overall mortality rate is around 10%. So out of every 100, 10 people will die. And most common cause of community acquired bacterial uh, meningitis in U.S. is the second most common cause of community acquired bacterial meningitis in USA. And clinical fa uh, features are quite varied ranging from transient fever, bacteremia to fulminant disease with death ensuring within us. So the disease uh, happens very fast. Uh, often what happens is that it is uh, very late to diagnose. So uh, because we are late in diagnosis, the disease is already spread fast. So outcome is not very good. But if ca it can be diagnosed at the initial stages, then the outcome can be better. Now, acute systemic meningococcal diseases can be manifested by three syndromes. One is meningitis alone. That means only meningitis, no associated things. Second is meningitis with meningococcemia. What is meningococcemia? It is the upper respiratory tract infection along with fever, rashes and lesions and ear, eye and eye problem. This is meningococcemia. And the third type is only meningococcemia. That is upper respiratory tract infection, fever, rashes, lesion, ear and eye problems. Uh, first, termed in 1805, uh, in the 19th century, due to advancement of medical sciences, treatment availability, uh, the outcome has been better. But post-1950, there, there has not been much advancement in the treatment per se. It is still the same thing that is going on. We could not find any new medicines. So that's why the mortality and morbidity is still the same as it was in 1950. It has been 70 years since then, roughly 70 years. But still, we are the same place where we were, where we are right now, same as that what we were 70 years back. Now, <clears throat> meningococcal meningitis is also known as cerebrospinal fever. This is a very important statement for your all India exams. That 
questions come like this which disease is also known as cerebrospinal fever answer is meningitis meningococcal meningitis or you may find only meningococcal disease <coughs> both cases both are right answer but if both the options are present always go for meningococcal meningitis it's better to be specific and it is an acute communicable disease caused by nisenria meningitis and it usually begins with intense headache vomiting and stiff neck and progress to coma within hours that means it will start with a small uh, headache throbbing headache intense headache vomiting stiff neck and progress to coma within a few hours so what happens is that since it is an intense headache we often confuse ourselves with something we call as migraine right when migraine what happens that the patient or the child comes with a complaint of ah severe headache we think severe headache okay it might be migraine so we treat accordingly but by the time the treatment has failed and you Uh, do reinvestigation and you find out that is a case of nisseria meningitis is it is already too late so whenever a patient comes with a history of severe headache ask about the how does the pain feel like or whether there is stiffness of neck or not because if you are late in diagnosing the you might lose the lose the patient to other patient might if the patient comes out also they might be having some kind of deformity so it is not good for the patient and this meningitis is a part of septicemia process <clears throat> fatality is around 80% over here and with early diagnosis the case fatality will decline to 10% so if you diagnose the case later on 80% of the cases is bound to die but if you can diagnose it alone the rate falls and it comes to 10% now let's come to the epidemiology see meningococcal disease is found worldwide it is spread throughout the world i'll give you a pictorial depiction later in the slides but with highest incidence can be found in the meningitis belt of sub saharan africa so there is a particular belt of meningitis if i uh, take uh, I, i'll take you give you the diagram of africa this particular area is called the sub saharan area this area is very much prone for this particular <coughs> disease it's a very it's endemic over there <coughs> sorry and in this region major epidemic occurs every 5 to 12 years with attack rates reaching 1000 cases per 1 lakh population so whenever the outbreak occurs up to 1000 people in every 1 lakh population might get affected from this particular meningitis <clears throat> and in other region of the world experiences lower overall rate of disease and occasional outbreaks even india also had few years back with annual attack rate of around only 0.3 to 3 per 1 lakh population now the case rate is only 1 in 1000 population and 1 in 100 population uh, in children in less than 2 years of age so so in general in adults if i talk about 1 in every 1000 person might be suffering from the disease and if i talk about children below the age group of 2 years 2 years it is one in every 100 so you can understand how much prevalent this disease is <coughs> it is endemic in usa with incidence of around 0.5 to 1.5 per lakh population and 10 times higher in children less than 50 years of age so this if you can see this particular chart over here this is the sub saharan area right this this particular marking you can see This is a sub-Saharan belt. It is very endemic over there. Uh, periodic outbreaks happen every five to twelve years, and this is a pictorial, uh, a graphical. Uh, let's say uh, not graphical. I'll say plotting. Uh, we have plotted actually depending on the year and number of cases we found that year. You can see there had been spike in 1995 to 1997 in that particular belt. Again in 2009 to 2010. So every five to twelve year, this happens. now these are the area that where <coughs> um, meningococcal meningitis is epidemic china australia sub saharan africa europe north america in totality south america 
Now, risk of this epidemic. The reason for the epidemic spread is still not known. We are still not aware of what are the reasons that this epidemic actually happens. And what we think is the most likely cause is the aerosol route. It can be transmitted by the aerosol route. And high attack rates are, in, uh, are mainly because of low poverty rate, uh, overcrowding, poor sanitation and malnutrition. Mostly the people from the low socioeconomic group are seen to be having this disease because of poverty, overcrowding, poor sanitation and most importantly malnutrition. <coughs> Herd immunity and specific virulence strain is implicated in case of rapid spread. So whenever there is a rapid spread, a specific virulent strain is always found to be the culprit. And nasopharyngeal carriage is the major associated environmental and host factor associated with the endemicity of this particular disease. Now, if I talk about India, it is the third most common cause of meningitis in children less than 5 years of age. And prevalence rate stands somewhere around 1.5 to 3% of all hospital admitted cases. And it is responsible for at least 1.9% of all cases regardless of the age. And India had seen three epidemics of this particular disease. Once in, uh, in recent times, for one is in New Delhi between 2005 to 2009, in Meghalaya between 2008 to 2009, and in Tripura in 2009. And this epidemic period coincides with the dry season and the wintry season. That means between the time frame of November to March. And existence of this epidemic disease has been recognized with highest attack rates in infant aged 3 to 12 months of age. So babies less than 1 year of age are most prone to this particular disease. Why? Yes, immunity might be low, the baby might be getting help from the maternal immunity. But after 6 months of age, the baby's immunity develops by itself. So since there is no exposure earlier, the baby catches this particular disease very easily. And India lies in the low epidemic, endemic zone as per WHO, but high carriage rate is found in close contact, which always justifies to start chemo prophylaxis. Now, this is the data of India. You can see in 1966 to 67, Delhi had an outbreak. 616 cases, 129 death. Again in Delhi, 85, 88, 6133 cases were found, out of which 799 died. Maharashtra 88, 85 to 88, 1573 cases, we don't have the date, uh, data on deaths. <coughs> 85, 87, Surat, 197 cases, 34 deaths. <coughs> in 2005 to 2009, in the outbreak was happened in Delhi, so 1725, 1725 babies or children, people were affected. However, there was no death during that phase. Why? because of better infrastructure, because of better medical facilities. But why? Because see, if in 2008 and 9 there was an outbreak in both Meghalaya and Tripura. Meghalaya 2,000 patients, Tripura 200 patients. Out of which 200 in died in Meghalaya out of 2,000 and 50 died in Tripura out of 200. Why? Again, infrastructure is one of the major reasons. Uh, since advanced infrastructure is not there and most of the areas are remotely located, that's why people could not get access to better treatment facilities. That's why the number of death was higher. This is a data of India that, see, West Bengal, Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka are three of the endemic areas of meningococcal meningitis in India. West Bengal alone has, a, has four, roughly 14,000 cases between 2006 to 2014, followed by Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka. Three epidemics seen in Delhi, Meghalaya and Tripura in 2005 to 8, 8 and 9. Now the source of infection, the organism is found in the nasopharynx of both cases and carrier that is how they spread it by the aerosol route and the period of communicability which is uh, how when we can say that the period of communicability has, communicability has subsided that means when there is no more discharges present from throat. So once this discharges from the throat stops, the period of infectivity or period of communicability is actually over. And the cases rapidly lose their infectiousness within the first 24 hours of specific treatment. So by the time of treat, uh, when the treatment started, 24 hours from then, the infectivity power will reduce a lot.
so age and gender wise if i say the disease is predominantly mostly in the children but adult can also get affected to it and there is no discrimination between male and female both are susceptible to this particular disease however young and the adult this two age group is more vulnerable to this particular disease now immunity if i talk about immunity most of the immunity is acquired through the subclinical infections and clinical disease and immunization confers a lifetime immunity and infants will receive a bit of the passive immunity from their uh, mothers as maternal immunity now if i talk about the environmental factors see seasonal variation is there mostly seen in the dry and cold weather november to march and overcrowding predisposes individual to get affected so schools refugee camps um, cramped houses camps these are all makes this particular disease spread faster now mode of transmission mainly transmitted by the droplet infection and portal of entry is through the nasopharynx respiratory tract nasopharynx route or we call also call it the respiratory tract route through which the disease actually gets entry into the body incubation period is basically 3 to 4 days but may vary from 2 to 10 more days now clinical feature mostly we can see that the patients have mainly complaints of sudden onset of headache fever nausea nausea um, decreased concentration and myalgia too whenever you hear that the patient is having headache do not confuse it with migraine as i have earlier said ask for the classification of the pain how does the pain feel like if it is throbbing stabbing or it is breaking your head make sure that you do not keep it as a migraine itself go for other testing make sure it is not meningitis and again if the patient complains of myalgia that will again help you to uh, do the different clean, uh, differential diagnosis better and you it will throw you towards the track of diagnosing this case as a uh, case of meningitis and uh, non suppurative pharyngitis can also be a preceding symptom means when the patient have presented to you with all this history ask them whether they had been having uh, throat pain or difficulty in swallowing few days back or not if it is there then it is a sign that the, this patient is actually suffering from uh, meningitis meningococcal meningitis and high index of suspicion is required particularly in case of non epidemic setting and what are the worrisome signs of this particular disease if the patient complains of leg pain cold extremities and abnormal skin color these are not good signs then the patient is probably going to die or going to have disability if they are going if they are coming out of the disease again if the patient is having low bp and elevated pulse rate it is again a bad sign that the patient might be going to shock intensive search for petechi has to be done and ecchymosis has to be seen so you have to search for the rashes throughout the body and proactive test for meningeal irritability has to be done that is we do via kernix and brudinskis see stiffness of neck will again be a com initial component of this kernix sign <clears throat> patient may go into shock disseminated intravascular coagulation and purpura fulminans can be also seen in this kind of patient when the com uh, complication comes <clears throat> and chronic meningococcemia in case of chronic meningococcemia acute arthritis dermatitis syndrome is also seen and patient may have pneumonia pharyngitis urethritis and ascending infections too which will lead to occult bacteremia now high index of suspicion is required particularly in case of an, oh sorry uh, so if i put it in a nutshell meningococcal meningitis will present to you as with complaints of sudden onset of intense headache fever nausea vomiting photophobia stiffness and various neurological signs if you are, you might confuse it with migraine so make sure you do the kernix brusinskis you ask for myalgia you ask for the history of throat pain few days back so that you do not confuse it with meningococcal meningitis and just give us plain simple of uh, plain simple treatment of migraine and the patient might go into complications this again the pictorial depiction of all the complaints that the patient might present to you now this disease is very fatal within the first 20 to 4 to 48 hours 
and with prompt antimicrobial treatment and good healthcare facilities, permanent neurological sequelae may be seen also in 5 to 10 percent of the cases and the outcome might be much more better. And meningococcal, in case of meningococcal septicemia, there will be a rapid dissemination of the bacteria in the bloodstream. And uh, uh, it can also be characterized by circulatory collapse, hemorrhagic skin rashes, the petechies, the ecchymosis, and also will uh, give you high fatality rate. <clears throat> now, how can you diagnose this particular disease? You have to take throat swab culture or the blood culture, and best part you can do is by isolating this particular meningitis uh, from the fluid like blood or CSF, if I'm not wrong. Now, let's talk about the prevention and control. That is the most important thing in this particular <coughs> class today. See, uh, first and foremost, you have to do early diagnosis of the case so that the outcome can be good. You have to do isolation of that particular case and you have to start the treatment as early as possible. If you can see over here, disinfection of discharges from note and throat has to be done every time it comes out. And treatment with antibiotics can save life for 90% of the cases provided that the treatment has started within the first two days of illness. So if you start within the first two days of uh, illness, 95% of the cases will recover. And erythromycin is the drug of choice in this particular case. But in case of contacts, these close contacts are also at risk of developing the disease and antibiotics are effective in preventing the additional cases through eradicating carriage of the invasive strain. Now, mass chemoprophylaxis has to be done in cases uh, where the, we, we fear that it might have spread to the community. So, uh, drug of choice in these cases will be ciprofloxacin, minocycline, spiromycin and ceftriaxones. And in case of immunization, you can give DTP, DTWP or DTAP vaccine, but however, in national immunization schedule, what you are giving is called a pentavalent vaccine, which has to be, uh, which contains diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, hepatitis B and hemophilus influenza type B. And we give it at 6, 10 and 14 weeks interval. However, after this particular uh, 6, 10 and 14, <clears throat> at 6 to 24 months, we give the first booster of DPT. And again, in five to six years of age, we give the second booster of DPT. Uh, but this particular immunization will be contraindicated if a patient is having anaphylaxis, earlier history of anaphylaxis, or encephalopathy. And this is a photo of Haemophilus uh, conjugate vaccine with meningococcal protein conjugated. Pedvax is the name. It is easily available in the market. The pediatrician still gives it but it is not there in the immunization schedule. So with this, we come to the end of meningococcal meningitis. Hope you had liked all the three topics. Study hard and do the assignments. See you soon.